Hi there everyone, um, this is Ed here from Bunch of Swines. Uh, today we're going to be cooking a tri-tip, uh, but for today we're going to do it a little bit different. Uh, we're actually going to cook a tri-tip like it's a brisket and see if that's really a thing. So um, what we're going to do today is start off, you know, we're just going to get our, our tri-tip out. So um, we've got a, uh, a nice, you know, this is a, a tri-tip, you know, this is a, actually a Canadian uh, one from Spring Creek, so it's been grain fed. You know, it's got a, a nice bit of marbling running through the meat. Um, so what I'm going to do is just basically take it out of the packet, give it a quick trim, uh, and then you know, look at how we're going to season this up. So I know a lot of people will be thinking that uh, you know tri-tip is a cut that you know it's more of a steak cut. So people normally cook it to uh, like a medium rare type tenderness. But you know, I've seen a few people online talking about how. Uh, they've been cooking it like a, like a brisket and getting getting a decent result from it. So, you know, I thought I'd, I'd give that a try myself today. So, as you can see with the tri-tip, you know, I've got a, a few bits of fat and uh, silver skin uh, going all over it. Uh, so, you know, I'm basically going to want to clean this up to make sure I can get my rub to stick. Uh, I've got a bit of a fat cap on the back. I'm probably going to leave that, maybe pick a bit. A little bit of it off just to thin it down but um, nothing too major you know I still want some fat on there to to protect the back end of it so I'm just gonna you know trim a few bits off uh, as we as we get into it you know you can see I'm just using the tip of my knife just to poke through poke through the silver skin and then I can just use it you know, work it along up to, to and just shave it out. You know, it saves picking through each piece individually. Yeah. You know, also, when you're trimming meat like this, it's generally a good idea to try and raise it up so you can shave close to the to the meat. Um, you know, the idea being here that if I leave it in the table and do that, I'm just going to end up gouging it a lot. So you know, I want to try and you know trim this fat off, but still actually uh, protect. You know, keep uh, as much of it as possible. So as you can see with the tri-tip as well, it's something that we've got to think about is um, that we've got these two different uh, grains running through it. So yeah, you can see how the grain runs that way on this section of the meat, and then it runs that way on this section of the meat. So yeah, we're just gonna, uh, don't need to worry about that when we're preparing it. Uh, that's your more gonna be worried about when we when we cook the, the meat, you know, once we go to serve it. So uh, I've just got a little bit of hard fat here. I just wanna cut out that bit of fat cap. There we go. And that's our tri tip, all nicely trimmed up. Uh, and ready to, to season. Okay, so now we've got our tri-tip trimmed up. Yeah, we're basically gonna, gonna season this and I wanna get quite a bit of flavor onto it. You know, it is a reasonable thick cut of meat. Uh, so, you know, what I'm gonna use is a, a few different rubs here. You know, some of our favorites from Big Copper Smokers. Uh, so the first rub I'm gonna use is their, their cash cow rub. Um, so this one basically has a, a lot of like salt, pepper, garlic. Yeah, gives me a nice base layer. Um, just straight over like that. Okay, the next one I'm going to use is the uh, double secret steak rub. So this is a uh, you know really good all-purpose beef rub. So again, I'm just going to give it a nice coating there. Yeah, going generous but not too not too over the top. Uh, and then the last one we're going to use is uh, a little bit of a happy ending finishing rub. So, you know, this one here is, you know, it's a bit more sweeter. Uh, so, you know, basically, you know, I've got a lot of savoury notes on it. I still want to add a, a little bit of sweetness to, to the beef and, you know, it'll add a, a good colour to it. So we're just going to finish it up with a bit of that. And there we go. And that's a basically our tri-tip. Uh, prepared, you know, I'm just going to pass it down, uh, but really I'm just going to leave it here, uh, let the rub soak into the meat, 
uh, and then basically we're just going to get the uh, gateway drum fired up so we're going to cook it on our gateway drum smoker today uh, we're going to cook it at about 300 degrees fahrenheit uh, and basically we're just going to keep going you know look at how it uh, how it does probably foil it halfway through and keep going till we're tender so we'll see you back in a bit Okay, so now our gateway drum smoker is up to temperature. We're running just at around 300 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, we're ready to, to put the, the beef on. Uh, basically, whilst I've had it sitting out, I put a, a tray over it so you know nothing could land on it. it didn't have any birds sort of swoop in and trying to steal it. Um, so you can see here, you know, the, the, the rubs all melted in nicely into the meat. It's ready to, to go on. So uh, I'm just going to add uh, a couple of chunks of wood into my uh, into my fire basket. So basically. Uh, a little bit of uh, cherry and a little bit of hickory. Uh, I don't need much in the drum. You know, we'll get a lot of uh, natural flavor from the charcoal. But I'm actually just chucking that straight onto the fire. And then what I'm gonna do, put my cooking rack in. So on the gateway drum, we're actually cooking direct over the coals, just at a very, you know, an elevated height. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this piece of meat and I'll just put it down, straight down into the middle of the into the middle of the rack, straight over the fire, fat side down. Um, yeah, you know, I'm going to use that fat cap to basically uh, protect uh, a lot of the meat during the cooking process. So we're just going to put the uh, the lid back on the drum, let this run, probably be, you know give it a check in about an hour's time, see how it's looking, and uh, and we'll go from there. Okay, so our tri-tip's been cooking for about an hour now. Uh, we've been running pretty hot on the gateway, so we've been running around 300 degrees Fahrenheit. We're gonna cook this thing hot and fast. Um, one of the things, you know, so uh, since we've been away, I had to make a, a slight change. So I noticed the, the drum was smoking quite a lot. Uh, basically had a, a lot of the fat dripping in the coals. Uh, so what I did was actually um, moved a, a foil pan underneath to catch some of that, um, you know, whilst it's okay to have that. I kind of don't want to smoke out the neighborhood. Uh, and also I want to control some of that smoke flavor that I actually put onto the food. So um, what we're gonna do now, we're just gonna take a, a quick look at this. We're gonna flip it over. So basically what we're doing is the old uh, burn and turn. Um, basically try and really uh, ramp up the, the bark and you know the, the color that we'll get on this before we look at wrapping the, the tri-tip. So we're just gonna have Okay, so like I said, we put a, a foil pan down on this side. Um, you know, you can see we're starting to get a nice bit of colour, you know, a nice bit of bark. It's sort of setting a bit. Uh, but what I want to do to sort of really ramp this up is uh, I'm just going to flip it over. So it's actually more direct over the fire, you know, with the, the bark facing down. Uh, we're going to leave that for another half an hour uh, and then think uh, it may be time to give it a wrap and we'll take it from there. Okay, so our tri-tip has been on uh, with it, with the, the meat side facing down for the last half an hour, so 30 minutes. Um, we're now ready to wrap, so I'm going to bring in my uh, beautiful assistant, uh, the uh, Debbie McGee of the uh, barbecue world of Bunch of Swines, uh, my partner Emma. Uh, so Emma's going to, to wrap the tri-tip. Uh, basically, we're going to wrap it in foil. We're going to add a bit of uh, beef bovril. So uh, this is like a, a UK product. I mean, you could be used like uh, better than bullion or something like that, but uh, we buy it, buy it in the powder form uh, so we can mix it cold. And basically we mix uh, one tablespoon with about 250 milliliters of, uh, of water or in fluid ounces, about 10 fluid ounces. So uh, we're gonna get this uh, tri-tip off. So. There we go. So on the bottom, I've got two layers of tin foil. 
I'm going to just lift that up. You know, you can see we've got a lovely dark crust that build up on there just from that little 30 minute burn. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to fold in all the corners of the tin foil so that when I add the bovril, it doesn't all come loose and go all over the table. So just all over the top, making sure it gets a good covering. Over top, shiny side in is really important. One of my things. And then get in each of the corners, you're going to whack it up tight until we can feel the meat. So basically, making a huge, huge Cornish plastic. So the idea here is basically we're wanting to braise the meat as it uh, to get it tender. Uh, we don't want to steam it, so we want to try and get as much of that air out of the tin foil as possible to make sure it's wrapped nice it and tightly like. to it. So uh, we're going to put this back on the drum again. We're staying at 300 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, I'm going to make sure I put it back over the side where I've got the foil pan underneath. I want to try and break some of that heat so I don't get any sticking to the bottom of the foil. Um, and I'm guessing we're probably going to need to cook this for something like another, I don't know, I'll check it in an hour and a half, two hours and see how we're doing tenderness wise then. Okay, so uh, we've had our tri-tip wrap now for a couple of hours. Uh, I'm going to give it a, a check now to see, you know, see how it's doing, see if it's tender enough. Um, yeah, you know, I don't really use a lot of technology when I'm cooking. I just use a, a thermopen. Um, that's like, you know, my go-to. So what I'm going to do is obviously open it up. Still got it all wrapped in the foil. Now, when I'm testing for tenderness, I am going to check in a couple of different places because if you remember me saying that, you know, the, the grain runs in different directions. So, um, you know, first off, I'm going to go that way, which is across that grain. Okay, we're running... All right, all that feels, that feels much better. So, you know, because the one thing I want to make sure is that I have an even tenderness going all the way through the meat. So I'm just uh, probing it, you know, just going to feel. I mean, that does feel, feels done. So um, I'm not 100% sure. So, you know, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to put it back on, put the lid back on. Um, you know, give it an extra 10, 15 minutes. It's not going to hurt it. Um, just to make sure that we do get the tenderness that I want. Uh, and then, you know, we'll whip it out and, and serve it. Okay, so um, we gave our tri-tip uh, another 15 minutes. That time's passed. Uh, so I've taken it off the, off the gateway drum. Um, it's feeling pretty tender, to be fair. So what I want to do is just open this up. Really hot tin foil. Um, just so I can let it vent a bit. So basically, you know, I've got it cooked to the right tenderness. So I now want to uh, stop the cooking process. And also where I've had it steaming for a bit, you know, steaming, braising in the tin foil, you know, the bark will have gone a little bit soft. So, you know, if I leave it out in the air for a bit, you know, that will then see, you know, harden back up and reform. But Whilst I've got the uh, the tri-tip open, you know, what I also want to do is um, just use a, a little bit of sauce over this. So, you know, we've got this uh, University of Q GPA sauce. Uh, it's really nice. It, it, it's basically, a, you know, tastes like a mix of uh, a number of different sauces. So, you know, I will uh, add this on. You don't have to add it. I know a lot of people will be saying, why are you adding sauce onto beef? I do, I like it, you know, I like the extra sweetness that we get on there. Um, you know, a lot of the rubs are quite salty. Uh, so it's all, you know, uh, it's just all about building different layers of flavour and different flavours into the meat. So, um, you know, just get that, 
maybe a little bit heavy there, but that's fine, it'll all just sit in the juices. So there we go, we've got our tri-tip all glazed up now. Um, and that's it, so what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna cover it back up, you know, close the tin foil up, leave it to rest. You know, the heat on the tin foil, you know, on the meat, uh, is going to set that glaze on top as well so you know i don't need to put it back on the smoker i'm just going to do it like this and uh, and then yeah, we'll cut into it and see what it's like okay so our tri-tip has had a, a bit of a rest probably rested for about I don't know, half an hour 45 minutes so now is the moment of truth so you know can you cook a tri-tip like a brisket and will it actually taste any good so Ooh, it's definitely tender so you know we can see from here that we've got a nice uh, nice color to it uh, i'm just going to plop this down on the board okay so you might remember earlier i said about how the the tri-tip runs in two two separate directions so what we're going to want to do is sort of look for where the grain um actually meets in the middle which is about about this section here so uh, first of all i'm going to take a slice straight down the middle here well, that's definitely tender um and then you know to make it as soft you know and easy to eat as possible i'm going to want to cut across the grain so you know i've turned it around 90 degrees and i'm just going to start slicing it into into little slices okay and i'm going to want to try this side as well to see what the the the, the leaner part of the tri-tip actually tastes like you know did i get it tender here i think the answer is yes so So, I mean, you know, looking at it, it looks okay. Actually, there's a bit of moisture in there. Is it good? It tastes okay. It tastes pretty good. A little bit drier on that end. Um, I'll try the, the fattier end. It's pretty good. Um... It is different to a brisket. So, you know, whilst it's a an interesting way to cu cook it, my personal preference, I don't think I would probably do it again. Um, you know, it, it is nice. I mean, it, it would be good if you, you know, want something brisket-like, but you don't want to cook a whole brisket. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, I, I, I would much rather probably cook a, a full brisket, but that, that's me. But anyway, Thanks for um, thanks for watching. Um, if you're interested in having a go at this and seeing what it's like for yourself, uh, feel free. You know, I mean, we'll put um, links in the description to uh, different butchers where you can buy this type of meat. Um, you know, different suppliers for like rubs, sauces, whatever else. Uh, and then, yeah, you know, if you've got any questions, feel free to to drop us a line.